When the temperature outside starts to drop and the leaves turn golden and crunchy, it means it's time to pull the toys off the lake. Although I keep the jet ski in the garage, I still go through a winterizing procedure to make sure that everything is in tip-top shape for next season. This video will take you through the steps I use to get my jet ski ready for winter storage. A bit different for me this year, I'm going to use a cart to store the jet ski on rather than on the trailer to try to save some valuable garage space. I'm not sure how that'll go, but let's give it a try. This kit you can get online, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Uh, it includes 112 ounces of oil as well as the filter and the o-rings for the filter. Here's the tools that you'll need for the job as well as some of the other products that I use. For this process, I tend to use about three gallons of RV antifreeze. First thing I like to do is top off the gas tank. I make sure to use stabilizer in the fuel and I put the highest octane fuel in that I can get. Next, I'm setting it up here to flush the system. There's just an adapter that you can hook on so that you can hook a garden hose to this. Start up the engine before turning on the water. That's just residual from the lake coming out. Then turn on the water. Never turn on the water first. This is just a flush just to get the lake water out of it. I tend to just run this until it's flowing out of the back pretty good. You never want to let this thing run for more than two minutes at a time. So again, just so the water is flowing out well. And then reverse the process, turn off the water. I usually unplug it completely just so I can see when it's done draining. And then shut off the engine. Now I get ready to just flush it with antifreeze. I use about three gallons. I like to use RV antifreeze, it's safe for the environment as well as pets and animals. I'm going to use a submersible utility pump using the same hookup. Again, start up the engine first, then engage the pump. I just let the antifreeze run through until it starts flowing out the bottom, and you can tell when it's coming out because it'll turn pink. For me, this step probably isn't entirely critical because I do store the jet ski in the garage, so it never gets to freezing. But I like to force any residual water or anything out of the system. Next, unplug the pump, then disconnect while the engine is still running, and then turn the engine off. Time for oil change. like to wipe down any debris or anything that might be on the engine before I uh, pull out the spark plugs. Using a T10 socket here to remove the oil filter. Oil filter just pulls off and then I use the pick to get these o-rings off. Wipe off the excess oil, clean it up a little bit. Dip my finger in some oil just to lubricate the ring slightly. Usually I'd be wearing some sort of gloves, but I didn't have any on me at the time. Oil exposure is quite minimal, so I'm not too worried about it. This can be a little bit tricky to get on and off, but they're not too bad.
It's always so satisfying once those rings go on. And it's just a push fit back in and it's ready to be reinserted. I love this thing. This is my pneumatic oil extractor. I use it for cars, for this jet ski. I use it for all kinds of stuff. The thing works awesome. It comes with a couple of different size uh, tube attachments in case you have a different size uh, oil tube. But basically you just put it down in there, turn on the air, and out comes the oil. This engine, it takes approximately 20 to 30 minutes to get all the oil. So I just set it, forget it, walk away, do something else. I also use it to just make sure to get anything that's sitting at the bottom of the oil filter tube. When reinstalling this oil filter, be really careful because it's really easy to cross thread that thing. The torque spec is about 80 inch pounds. I tend to get between 80 and 90 ounces of oil out and I put back in what I took out. This time was 86 ounces. I'm not so concerned with getting it all out. What I'm more concerned about is keeping the level consistent. Moving on to the spark plugs, remove the wires from the ignition coils. And on this engine, these are just a friction fit so they pull out. I tend to keep these lined up so I put the same one back in the same hole. Now my jet ski doesn't get run super hard during the season. It doesn't get a lot of hours put on it. So I check the spark plugs. I don't replace them every season. As long as they look good, I put them back in and use them. This time, however, cylinder three has given me a little bit of an issue. As you can see, there's some oil dripping off of that. I had an issue with that this summer and I thought it was because perhaps I forgot to tighten the plug down all the way. But looking at this, I think probably the issue is the spark plug tube that's underneath the valve cover. This is a picture of it here. There's a gasket on either end and that gasket can go bad. This shows where that tube sits in relation to the engine. So when that gasket goes bad, oil can leak up into that tube and then you have a fouled plug. So I'll replace that in an upcoming video and I'll leave a link to it here once it's finished. Now here I'm just spraying some fogging solution into the engine, each of the spark plug holes. When reinserting the spark plugs, I set them into the hole. I turn them counterclockwise until I feel a click. That's the thread engaging in the thread in the block. You want to make sure you don't cross thread these because if you do, you'll be in a world of hurt. I'm just putting the same plugs in that I pulled out, even the oil fouled one. I'll change it out in the spring. The torque spec on these is about 18 foot-pounds. I tend to do it by hand just because I've done it a number of times. Put the ignition coils back in. I like to use this anti-corrosion lubricant and just spray down the entire engine bay. Drives out any moisture, keeps any moisture from collecting on anything in there. And when you open it up in the spring, it's nice and clean and fresh and just like factory new in there. Remove the dipstick so I can reinstall the cover. And just a final wipe down, just so everything is nice and tidy. 
I hold the throttle all the way down and crank the engine for about 10 seconds or so just to move that fogging liquid around. And then I remove the battery. One of the biggest problems with keeping the jet ski in the garage was that it took up so much space, and most of that space was taken up by the trailer. So this year, I got an aqua cart, and I'm keeping the jet ski on that. Pulling it off like this for the first time was a little bit scary, but everything went well and it slid right off. You can see those white rails on the bunks. Uh, those are some Teflon rails that I got from a company down in Florida. Uh, I'll leave a link to those down in the description as well. Definitely made it much easier to get the jet ski off. And there it is in place. I'm ultimately very pleased with how the cart worked out. It gives me back a lot of space in the garage while still being very sturdy and best of all, movable. The leaking spark plug tube gasket was a bit of a surprise, but it's an easy fix. The parts are on the way and I'll leave a link to that video once it's done. Until next time, I'm Maine Jason. Get out there and give it a try.